Hey, what's up, guys? It's the D down here. Today I'll be showing you my media encoder settings, mostly because the videos that are out there on YouTube about media encoder settings are for videography, and those that's mostly a DSLR footage and not PC gameplay, so the settings don't work out. And the YouTube videos that are for PC gameplay are really retarded, telling you uh, to run your bitrate at 75 renderings like no no and they're telling you to upscale downscale and all that crap it's just no don't it's, it's stupid it doesn't really help you out so that's what I'm showing you my settings so let's get started first of all you're gonna have your project open then you're gonna add it to the MIDI inc encoder queue and MIDI encoder should open up right after that you could uh, minimize this during the meantime now the settings I will be showing you first are the 1080p because that's what I render in at the end of the video I will have the 720p settings for you guys that record at 720p but I recommend you stay and listen to me in case you want to tweak some settings and you really don't know about those settings alright once your project has loaded up uh, I have my settings here already saved as a preset, but if you don't, just go into the web video, drop that down, and go into YouTube. Right click and hit preset settings, and that's how you edit the preset. So I'm gonna go into my preset and show you guys what I have set. First of all, I have my uh, width and height at 1080p. I have my frame rate at 59.94. This is a lot more friendly when it comes to uh, a video sharing websites and also my footage is recorded on Shadowplay and Shadowplay records at 59.95 or 96 so yeah anyways that rounds out to 60 FPS I have field order on match on source I have aspect set to square pixels I have TV standard set to NTSC the profile I have set to high you're gonna want to set your profile to high to get the best quality uh, the level I have set to 50, I mean 5.1. It's recommended that you use 4.2 because if you go higher, it won't be supported for some devices. So that's really up to you. But I have at 5.1. The higher is the better, but there's a sacrifice that some devices won't be able to play your video. Render at maximum depth. Uncheck that. That's only if you're using 32-bit color video but even if you are using 32-bit color video your viewers will be already using a 8-bit monitor so that makes it absolutely useless and all it does is increase your render time for bitrate settings uh, we have these three options or bitrate encoding we have these three options which is a constant bitrate uh, variable bitrate and variable bitrate to pass. For quality, this is pretty much a uh, okay, better, and even better. Supposedly, I do not see the difference between VBR one pass and two pass, but I still have two pass selected. If you select two pass, that will double the time of your render. For example, this render is one hour, but since I have VBR two pass starts I mean it creates a two hour render for target bitrate I have this set to 16 which is the recommended for YouTube now I have done many tests where a lot of people say oh set it to 50 blah 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 say at a high number so has a lot of data and YouTube won't compress it well I tested I tested it out and it still ended up very compressed on YouTube and I did not see a difference so I have to target bitrate at 16 maximum bitrate is only available for VBR and what this does is mm, it scans your uh, video and if it sees a frame that needs a higher bitrate it will give it that higher bitrate depending on what your max bitrate is set to for example Let's say I have a frame in my video where it requires 18 bit rate and not 22 or 16, then it will give you that 18 because my max is 22. 
Now if I add that to set to 16 as well, it wouldn't give it and it would be kind of pointless. For keyframe, it is supposedly, it supposedly gives you the best, a little better quality. Now the way to play with this is to set this to half your, uh, your FPS. So if you're recording at 60, set this to 30. Uh, sometimes they say it's even better if you set it to half of that. So set it. I set it to 15 because that's the half of 30. And so far, I've seen a little improvement in quality, just a small amount, but that's good enough for me, and that's why I have it at that. Uh, use maximum render quality. Do not use that. A lot of YouTubers are really dumb and don't know how to do research, and you just select that. But you can't blame them because it does say render at maximum render quality. And you gotta go for it, but this is mostly used for scaling. So if you're downscaling or upscaling, you wanna select that. Uh, use previews and not select that, nor set time code. For time interpolation, um, I found out that frame sampling is the best. If you're gonna try to render a 30 FPS video and try to create into a 60 FPS video, frame blending will be a better option. If you're gonna have a lot of slow motion, Optical flow is the best option for that. If you're using an older version of MIDI encoder, you actually don't have this option. You have the option to check uh, render with flame frame blending, and that's what I like. I hate the fact that they force you to select something now, but oh well. But for me, frame sampling did the best. The other two, I did have some warping issues. That was mostly on my Rocket League video, and that's why I selected this. I'm pretty sure this is for rapid motion, even though I couldn't really find that much information on it. Well, I did find information on it, but I didn't quite understand it. But this is the best option I got after multiple testing videos, and yeah. Alright, for the 720p settings, it is a bit quite different. Of course, your resolution is different, and everything's pretty much the same. Let's check this. I do have it on VBR2 pass as well, except the target rate is set to 10, which is the recommended. And I have this selected to 14 because it'll be quite stupid if you select it to 16. And those are the settings. I have my keyframe distance set to half as well. Actually, set it to half of half of that frame rate. So yeah, and Everything's pretty much the same, it's just 10 and 14 for your bitrate settings. After you've done that, you just go up here, select your preset, select where you want to save the file, I'll select my desktop, and you hit play. And those are the render settings. Uh, I also did a theory where I felt like YouTube partners had an advantage when it comes to video quality. So I went back to my old YouTube channel which is abandoned but I was a YouTube partner and I uploaded the same video and it had the same compression so there's that theory busted. I don't know why I thought about that but I just you know I wanted to test it and it doesn't matter if you're a regular YouTuber or a partner YouTuber. But uh, yeah that's pretty much it for my media encoder settings. I hope you like it and I hope your footage comes out the best quality it can. Now keep in mind we can only do so much when it comes to YouTube compression. It is a pain in the ass but oh well. Anyways if you like the video go ahead and hit the like button. If you dislike it you already know what to do. And if you would like to see more of my YouTube content go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.